Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with Toy Fair 2020. Some reveals, what we've gotten so far. Obviously, there's going to be more stuff coming out, but so much has already been revealed. Let's go ahead and talk about this coming up. So, the first thing I want to start out talking about is this Netflix uh, War for Cybertron redecos, and it's based off of, I guess, Netflix series that's coming out. But looking at this, it looks good. Uh, I don't know if we need a hound so much, but yeah, hound is pretty cool. We're also getting a Decepticon Mirage. Now, this is something that this recolor of this is something you can't get anywhere else uh, versus like Hound. You get a Hound that looks like the other Hound. Uh, most of these you can get somewhere else that look very, very similar, but not this guy. Oh, uh, Also, we're going to get Sideswipe here with some extreme amount of battle damaged and beat up. Um, yeah, if you're into that kind of stuff. There's a Chromia there. Uh, looking okay looks all right and they call this one scrap face even though it's refractor but refractor is actually a reflector anyway call him a scrap face uh, a third color iteration of refractor and we're gonna get this is interesting too is this is kind of like a shiny looking version uh, so more of a shiny uh, I guess it's shiny of Megatron and yeah we're gonna get into more stuff here but it's odd that they even uh, put this one out there's like the now the third recolor of Megatron and whether you like hot dogs or sausages you got a hot leak here and I love purple I love me some purple uh, I'm a sucker for me some purple and I don't have a purple secret yet so I'll probably pick him up so we've seen Earthrise RC and she looks good. She looks good. I'm just wondering, once I get her hand and compare her side to side, what will I like more? The Generations or her? And I always wondered that. I was like, how are they going to improve on the Generations? Because it was good. Uh, this is interesting. Um, I'm a little in the air about the alt mode, which is odd because I, I like the alt mode on the other one. Just having it in hand and comparing it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough till you actually you know, have it in person and see it for yourself. Pictures are really hard to tell with this one. So, leading into Scorponok, I think we're going to get this guy separate. And, uh, I mean, we all thought we would anyway. I don't think it's coming with Scorponok. Uh, we might get a little bit more information. But, yeah, I don't think it's coming with Scorponok. But, there's Scorponok. And he looks good. Uh, you know, it looks a whole lot like those little microscopic pictures. This is pro probably how I expected him to come out. But... I love the detailing. Look at that chest. That's that's just awesome. It is so Scorponok. And I really like the, the claws look good. His uh, arms are a bit short in my opinion, but I'm okay with that. I mean, not nitpicking him to death. I think he looks amazing. Uh, I, I just can't wait to see him in real mode. This is still sort of a rendered look to me. I think it's a render, but... We're going to see more of this at Toy Fair at an event here in just a little bit. But, man, I'm, I'm really happy about this, excited for it, and looking forward to it. And here's the actual base mode. And, again, this is a nice base mode. I think that Scorponok lends itself to make a good base mode. Even though it's really just the legs spread and the arms up, you know, that's, that's what it is. It still looks good. And uh, look how big that is. Those are deluxe figures on there. Usually, you notice, usually when they show a base mode, they show like MicroMaster kind of figures, tiny figures, uh, Headmasters, Titan Masters. But this is deluxe figures rolling all up on this. That looks great. To show how big it is, that actually is what it looks like with some Titan Masters. The Titan Masters look so small. And Scorpion mode, we all knew that Tiny Tell was going to be a Tiny Tell. Oh, more money for an upgrade kit, I guess. So we do get a good look at the head, and we get Zarak transformed up. Uh, pretty cool how the side of the legs for the head will turn into the eyes, or have the eyes painted on it. Uh, I kind of like these heads. I, I really like what they did with Fort Max's head, and with this, it's really cool. Incorporated that sort of G1 helmet with it. It just all is so many great homages to the G1, and here is the head in robot mode. You know, you gotta had, had to do something with those horns. I kind of wish they would have figured out a way to move the horns to the back. But, I mean, I guess it's a small complaint. 
So the robot mode, in my opinion, for the head, so sort of going up against Cerebros, and they call it Zarak, even though Zarak is actually the head of this guy. Uh, but anyway, the the side horns or whatever you want to call those uh, antennas are stuck to the shoulder, so that's the downside. But still cool looking, and I'm glad they went with the full figure. Here's Zarak. Next up, looking at Double Dealer, and he looks pretty cool. He's He's got a super opened inside of his leg. I mean, I usually don't care about hollowness, but that is a bit beyond hollowness. But anyway, moving on, I think he looks cool. I, the last double dealer they made, I, I passed on. I didn't think it was good at all. And this one, I think, gives us everything we want. We get a bird mode, which... Uh, see, I never had double dealer in G1, so I didn't know it did a bird mode. So that's cool. And then, of course, this is what I... When I think of double dealer, I think of this mode. And I think this huge... Uh, missile launcher thinking maybe it's a crossover to G.I. Joe or something, but uh, it also has this mode and uh, That looks good Man, it's things are just getting crazy. It's 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 running a muck around here oh, <laughs> Run a muck here coming out and I guess I'm wrong. Uh, I don't know. Am I wrong? I think I'm wrong this this is not a retool of cliff jumper because it looks so different um, Trying to see what a retool of it is I was hearing someone saying that they think it's a retool of Wheeljack, and I don't know. It, maybe it is a retool of Wheeljack. Uh, I don't have the Wheeljack yet. If I had it in hand, it would be a little bit easier to distinguish that. So uh, I can't remember where I've, I heard someone saying it's going to be a retool of Wheeljack, but uh, I can see it now looking at this picture. So maybe it is. Man, this, this is so many good... Reveals coming out. I love this Alicon. It is so great. Uh, it looks good. The, the alligator mode itself Lends itself to well not as G1 as I would have liked. Uh, I don't see where his tail is But the bot mode. I love it. I mean, I think the bot mode is awesome In fact, is it, what do we get one from impossible toys back in the day? And it's the only thing that we've gotten for an Alicon forever and now we got this and for 20 bucks instead of what, 60 or 70 people are trying to get out of the possible Toys one. And this one probably will function a lot better. Now we got Snapdragon, and we're about to probably see all the other modes of Snapdragon. I'm sure he's a triple changer, just like we had with uh, Ape Face. And I think he looks good. Uh, I like Ape Face. A lot of people bash Ape Face, but I like him. This guy here will probably be every bit as good, if not even a little bit better. Can't wait till we see a little bit more out of this, but Quintesson looks good. Uh, I didn't realize, like, how is a Quintesson going to have any sort of playability functionality and be a Transformer? Well, here it is. Turns into some little uh, battle station or something like that with a, uh, some sort of the, the journal. Um, the, the Quintesson journal, I think, is what it is. Something like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, I do like the tentacles that come out. They do look like they're kind of superposable. Uh, I still feel like this is going to give, again, a Possible Toys is the only one that has made this. Uh, a run for their money so we'll see when it comes out size wise I think it's right on par with the possible toys size wise we got some micro master pictures which is cool I like it um, not I see I'm not a huge fan of the micro masters but th the cars look really good and I think that you can really deck out one of those base displays with some of these uh, micro masters all over the place so I mean it's it's pretty much worth it I guess uh, would have been happier at a lower price point. So you're paying five bucks per MicroMaster. But then I see this shuttle, and I'm not 100% sure about what's going on with this shuttle, but it does look pretty cool. And there's another one. And they combine to make a really cool ship. Uh, it seems like they always kind of make these too small. So whenever they make a shuttle, I always feel like the shuttle is too small. But I guess we're getting another shuttle too with Skylinks, right? So. I actually am very surprised at these next couple of things and we've got a reveal of smokescreen and it looks it looks really good uh, in in the earth mode for Earthrise. you know I didn't buy uh, I think I just got prowl for the other one and I just really wasn't a fan of the Cybertronian mode and siege it's the only my really my only hang up in siege is Cybertronian mode and now we're getting Earth mode, and I think that there are people over there that are upset that they bought the Cybertronian modes, and, you know, I don't know. It's one of those things that the Cybertronian mode is different, and this is different. It's, 
I think it would be personally fun if I had the, the an Earth mode and a Cybertronian mode to compare to. But anyway, that debate, we could debate later. This guy looks great. Um, actually looks uh, really close to... Like, you could almost put this in an MP shelf if you hid the inside of the feet. But that head sculpt is awesome. Now we've got a uh, GoBot Tanker. No, no, this is uh, Megatron. Megatron, uh, man, I, I didn't think they were actually going to do another tank Megatron in Earthrise right after they did last year's. And now they got a redeco of Siege coming out. But yeah, here we go. They did it. I, I had my money against this. I was betting against this and I lost. And uh, it looks good. I mean, I don't have any qualms about it. It looks good. The head looks good. Uh, a lot looks good on this. Still has that huge kibble backpack. Now he's got the some kibble on the back of his hand, back of hand kibble, which kind of does takes away from what they've done going forward with this line. You throw some kibble on the back of the hands, you're just a step backwards. In my opinion, it's a huge step backwards, that kind of stuff. The inside of the legs actually are pretty clean, uh, and, and the waist section and the chest section are super G1 compared to Siege. But really, if you have a Siege one, I don't think, like this is, 20% more G1-esque than the Siege. I just don't see it as being that much improvement. But it does look like way different. Like so many different parts. I, I'm shocked. Here we have this guy. I'm not really sure who he is actually. Um, I didn't get the name of him, but he looks pretty cool. Looks just like kind of... Maybe it's one of those other bases from the MicroMasters. We're also getting a Cyberverse RC, and you know, usually I don't talk much about Cyberverse, but I do like RC, and I, I would really like to get my hands on RC to kind of see how she operates and compare. The Cyberverse is usually super uh, easy transformations, and I would just like to see how this happens. I mean, literally the car's on the backpack, and you lay her flat and just spread the car out. That seems like what it does. And we got some more pictures of Earthrise Skylinks. I think he looks good. Uh, actually looks really good. I, I like this one. Um, this is the Commander Class, the 80 bucks, uh, or I guess 45 if you wait uh, a month after Walmart gets it. <laughs> Here he is together with the shuttle and the space mode. And you know what? All these questions are answered for us now. There he is with the shuttle in takeoff mode. And look at this. They separate. You actually get a lion. We weren't a lion. It separates. And you get a bird. <laughs> Look at them bird legs. That's so funny. Awesome. Skylinks looks good. This baby Yoda here is pretty cool. And it's the child animatronic edition. And activate the force. Lay down for an, a force nap. Uh, removable pendant. Uh, over 25 sounds and motion combos. This is pretty cool. Probably going to be pretty pricey. We've seen the child in the packaging. So there he is. And, you know, I, I didn't see any information about this, but does he come with a little carrier, or is that something you have to get separate, or do you have to buy a whole different version to get that? It would be interesting to know. I guess you could buy this and go get the, the carrier off Etsy. All right, so looking into some Black Series, Black Series does look good, and looking at all these, we knew about half of them, but the other half we didn't know about. But I do want to talk about a few of these more specifically, looking into the Bespin Luke. Now the Bespin Luke looks good. He's got that photorealistic face paint. Um, I think it looks just the same as the original one. And also, this is one of those figures they were thinking about, or we all thought they would put in the Archive Wave. This makes so much more sense. In fact, let's abandon Archive Wave and do this. Why, why have the Archive Wave card bags at all? They should just be this card bag. Everything that came in Archive Wave should be on these. I don't know. Just thought. So look at this Lando here. He looks really good. Uh, the face printing and painting is an improvement. Also, this Imperial TIE Fighter. Now, a lot of people were wanting to get this guy, like extras of this guy, when that First Order TIE Fighter came out. But uh, back then, it was actually kind of hard to get your hands on him. Now he's not too hard to get, but now he'll be real easy to get in this wave. So this R2-D2 is interesting because he's got the, the Dagobah mud and stuff on him, the gunk on him, but he's missing a lot of accessories that the previous one had, uh, according to what it looks like here. Now, maybe there's 
something different to it that I don't know. I uh, would like to dig in and get a little more information about this guy. I wonder if the, the little sister scope goes up and down. So maybe they get rid of accessories, but they add functionality. That would be cool. So here is the Luke, and the Luke looks good. He has the removable helmet. And what I'm hearing is this is set up more for the Empire Strikes Back, for the Snowspeeder, and not for the X-Wing. And yes, there is a difference. So I guess you pose him next to R2-D2. You have to go get the other version. <laughs> and really cool looking Hoth Rebel Troopers. I like them. They're cool. They look good. And I didn't know about this one. Like this is one that I didn't even know that they made it. And people are saying it's a repack. But I didn't even know that this came out in the past. Somehow I missed it. I passed over it. Didn't care I guess at the time. But I'm going to get one of these guys. Or a couple of them maybe. Because it does say you get different uh, head options, face face options, uh, I guess face expressions or something. Cut two different guns. So there's different ways to display them. And they anticipated people buying multiples of this so that you can do different display options and make them look like different people. And if, you, if, you, if you're one of those people that actually take them out of the package, you could make them look like this on your shelf. I don't know if I'll ever see them like that, though. So one of the bigger reveals here is... The snow speeder, and you do get Luke with, or not Luke, you get Dak with him. Yeah, and anyway, he is a good looking figure. Just definitely reusing that whole mold and just throwing another head on it and stuff is what it looks like to me. I didn't look at it that deep and that close, but that's pretty much what's going on. The, the, the gloves look a little bit different, but it is cool. This is one of the vehicles I thought they should have made, and I'm glad they're making it. It looks amazing. It's not too big. It's not too small. It is super relevant. That is an amazing head sculpt too. Uh, it's just awesome. They did a great job. I think this set is right on point with what they should be making. Snow Speeder looks really good. I like it. I like what they've done. I look forward to picking one of these up this summer. All right, moving into a little bit of vintage collection stuff. We've got a few reveals. First of all, we're going to be getting a reissue of the Slave One. Now, I heard rumors of this, and I actually shot them down. I was like, there's no way they'd reissue that thing. But when you stop and think about it, they do need to put out a bigger vehicle. And this is a pretty good-sized vehicle. But they're not going to go big like Falcon or at, -AT. So this actually does make a lot of sense. And it looks good. I would have actually preferred a new mold and a new vehicle. But this particular vehicle is in pretty high demand. And for those of you who got the previous version, there are some differences. I don't know if you consider them upgrade, but there are differences. So the first version is still unique in a way. So the different paint deco, which I don't know 100% the differences, but the bottom, so the back of it, or you'd say the bottom of it, is redesigned or redone. It looks different, and I think that looks cool. It looks good. So that's a nice looking setup there. And I don't know, if the, does it come with that stand? I would assume it does. Also, in the Vintage Collection, you're getting a, a Luke Jedi Knight, so so now <laughs> I've already got two versions of this guy, uh, but I don't have the cloak, so now I'll get the cloak and I, my life will be complete. And we also get the Gonk Droid. So a lot of people want this Gonk Droid. I think he looks cool. I am looking forward to a Gonk Droid, uh, especially in the Vintage Collection. Super Retro is the Retro Collection and it's coming back with this next wave. Hey, great choices. I couldn't have... I, I like this. I like the choices they made. They're pretty basic, pretty common. Not 100% of what was on my list, but still good. Anyway, let's moving into this. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the Bespin Luke. Now, Bespin Luke here looks okay. Looks just like the original. I mean, yeah, pretty much like the original. <sighs> Got to get that hair dryer out and... And peel them stickers off, I guess. <laughs> Next up, we're going to talk about Leia and the Hoth, which makes sense. I mean, that's that's a very logical one. Uh, looks okay. Han Hoth. Definitely a favorite amongst collectors. Big time. Yoda. Yoda with the orange snake. I wonder if, just for fun, they throw the Yoda with the orange snake. They throw Yoda out there and change up the snake color. Wouldn't that be cool that you have like a chase? I mean, I, I, no, it wouldn't be cool trying to chase down both colors, but 
That would be cool, just like randomly. Oh, I got the brown snake. Oh, I got the orange snake. Oh, I got the brown snake. That would have been cool. Anyway, uh, Lando. Yeah, Lando is a must-have. Good job on picking Lando as a character. I'm, I'm happy with it. Heck, he's out in, in the three three-quarter inch and in the uh, six inch at the same time. And of course, Boba Fett. Like, how could you not do Boba Fett? Like, I, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know how they could have just not done Boba Fett. So it's very, very obvious one right there. And of course, this game. This game's going to come with uh, a, an exclusive figure. And so, yeah, that's a thing. But I really don't like this. Like, it would have been better, in my opinion, if they would have been a diorama. Or maybe we could have gotten one of those play sets that they made back in the day. You know, when they... They had those, uh, the Hoth battle playset, or Land of Jawas playset, or something like that, and included a figure. Droid Factory playset. No, we get another game that nobody's gonna want. But the, they want the figure. So, you, so it's basically you're buying a twenty dollar figure. I mean, you can buy a twenty dollar figure, and I don't know what you can do with the game. This figure is an odd choice to me. Like, why would they go out of their way to make another figure? So a lot of people just use that one, you know, the X-Wing loop in their snow speeder. So this is the snow speeder loop. I don't see that this could have been a slot that we fill something that we never had at all. I, mean, I know we never had this in snow speeder, but I don't know. I felt, I feel like they did a really good job with Tarkin. Tarkin was a great pick. I don't know. Now we're getting into some role play stuff. So for the kiddies, the kids aisle... We're gonna get these uh, pre visible lightsabers, uh, the dark saber, and it's cool. That is really cool. And I'm hearing from some friends of mine saying there's gonna be 20 bucks. I don't know. I mean, the lightsabers always cost like 30, but 20 bucks is a. If this is 20, that's a good price for a good item that that really is relevant to the Clone Wars time frame. But I'm more interested in this. I really like this Darth Raven lightsaber. I like purple blades. I think it's cool that we're getting a, another hilt, and that hilt is amazing. I really look forward to this one. And the thing is that I'm kind of getting tired of how they kind of rehash the same old lightsabers over and over. We got a Kylo Ren though, and I think we got what the the Kit is a Kit Fisto, one of them Plo Clune Kit Fisto, one of those two uh, had come out. But really, other than a couple of new ones over the last decade, there's nothing new. This is new, and this looks good. And they're using their new technology for it, so. Uh, I haven't seen the price on it yet. I hope it's not that new. Sorry, $300 pricing though. This hilt is just outstanding. It looks great. <laughs> I love the way it looks. Hey, it looks like it's a, is it a removable blade? I didn't think they were doing removable blades uh, on the mainline anymore, but maybe they are. Talk about some Joe real quick. Looking at Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes looks pretty good. And a couple of these figures are showing me that we're going to get some options. We're going to be getting options with these figures. They're not going to be just one and done. You have some different version type options. And you get the like the chest uh, dressings on this guy. The different weapons on this guy. The backpack. All this stuff. Really cool. I like that. Here's what he looks like with... Um, this is okay. So this is obviously exclusive. So the exclusive type, I don't, we don't know where it is yet. So the mainline release probably won't have this much stuff with it. Obviously, it's gonna get a little extra for an exclusive. Uh, I really prefer just the mainline basic one. I'm fine with that. I don't need an exclusive, so uh, I can live with just just getting the regular old one. But anyway, still looks good. Snake Eyes is great. I'm actually more interested in this Roadblock. Now Roadblock looks good. And at first I was taken aback. I was like, oh, they went with the green vest option for the movie. But looking at the green vest real close, it looks like it goes up real high. And, and the fact that everything else with the green vest shows like a shirt. So making me think that underneath that vest is his signature tank top. And he's gonna look a lot more retro when you take that vest off. That will be cool. That, I, I, I think it, you're going to get both options here. It's going to be great. And here he is holding this gigantic gun. Uh, Would have liked more classic weapons, but you know what? They're having to appeal to kids also. 
So I can see the route they're going. I know for me personally and selfishly, I would have wanted 100% looking just like it walked out of the 80s. And I know that's not the world we live in anymore. So, uh, so that brings us to Scarlet. She looks good. Uh, I'm, I'm understanding right now how hard it is to do like the women's head sculpts and face sculpts and getting that uh, to look right. Uh, that that is awesome. That looks good. Uh, except for the fact that I would have rather had, you know, closer to the vintage style. I'll live with this. But you know, this starts making me think, what are the bad guys gonna look like? You know, here she is, just in a standard pose. Uh, see, I'm not a huge fan of like the extra upgrades and the stylization that's going on, but it, at least we're getting it right now. Duke, look, Duke looks the least stylized or off the mark. He just looks super Duke. That's what Duke looks like. That's what we would expect out of a Duke. So I'm not surprised there. I'm not shocked at all. I think he does look pretty good. Here he is with a worse picture, but a better angle. So there he is. G.I. Joe classified Duke. So I'm going to end up having to do another video, a roundup, talking about more stuff that we had at Toy Fair because Toy Fair obviously has so much more than what I've just covered. And of course, there's going to be more reveals coming over the next couple of days. So it'll be pretty interesting to see what else is going on. I could deep dive into it in another video out in the next couple of days. Like, subscribe to Deer Hanger out.